Hello PSI Gamer fans, and welcome back to RimWorld. We are continuing from where we left off last time, with Tyson working on some components at the fabrication bench, and Shepard is drilling for some steel. The following evening, we can also see that a polar bear has come onto the map and is trying to eat our husky, and so Shepard, Lek, and Johns will work together to take it down. and the three of them managed to take down the polar bear. However, Johns and the Husky have both received some major injuries. Luckily, with some rest and some doctor care from Shepard, Johns and the dog should both be recovered from their injuries within a couple of days. And at this moment, we can also see that there is a meteorite comprised of jade falling to the north of our base. We do not have time to mine it right now, however, if we need some extra money, that is where we should look. The following day, we also receive a peace talks quest from Outlanders of Southwest Rome. And as much as I'd like to become friends with these people, we don't have a very good negotiator, and it would be quite the travel time to get there, so we probably will not be doing this. And we can also see that we have just run out of steel for our deep drill. Luckily, however, there is another vein of steel underground right next to that one, and so we won't have to go back to scanning anytime soon. In the evening, Shepard will work on laying down some flagstones in order to increase movement speed, and then Shepard will start working on upgrading our defenses. He will be constructing four new mini turrets, as well as walls and sandbags to keep them safe. And the next day, we can see a slave ship passing by, and so Lek can call them to do some trading. We can sell them a couple of old weapons for a small amount of money, but more importantly, we have a large amount of money saved up from last episode, and I would like to buy Petra. And if we look at her stats, I think it is quite obvious why we chose to buy her. Overall, she is a pretty good worker. She is quite good at mining, and she's actually better at social than Lek. She is also a pretty good doctor, which is important because without her, we'd only have Shepard. And though Shepard is a somewhat competent doctor, I still think it would be useful to have an extra pair of hands if there's a lot of injuries that need tending to. And to get Petra equipped with a weapon, she will be using John's SMG as she is a better shooter, and John's will go back to using the auto pistol. Tai San will also get to work on a thrombo for Parka, as Petra needs a coat, and the only one we have is Tattered. And we can see that the next day, Tyson has finished making his excellent quality Thrombo for Parka. And because this is the best Parka he has made so far, we are going to be giving it to Shepard. And Shepard will give his old second best Parka to Tyson, who will then give his Parka to Petra. Later, we can see that Shepard has managed to anchor some underground insects while drilling at the deep drill, and so everyone will have to be drafted up for a fight. and the resulting fight is ended rather quickly, though McTodd does receive a couple of cuts on her arms and legs. And now it is time to give Petra her own bedroom, and for this I think we will be repurposing our old armory as we are about to move that to a different location. We will start the work on Petra's bedroom by making the old armory slightly smaller. This makes Petra's bedroom the same size as everyone else's bedroom, and it also makes it easier to heat. Shepard will start working on replacing the concrete floors in Petra's future bedroom with stone tiles. However, before he can finish this, he will go to attend Tyson's party. And unfortunately, the party will have to be called off, as we are being raided by a large group of mechanoids. They have drop potted into the area, however their drop pods have scattered throughout the map. Aside from a single lancer which landed inside of our base and was disposed of quickly, all of the mechanoids have arrived outside, and so we can get full benefit from our kill box. We can also have Shepard use his Blinding Pulse ability on the pikemen to prevent them from getting any shots in on anybody. And after a short fight, all of the mechanoids have been defeated, and everyone can go to bed. And the following morning, Shepard will finish laying down the stone tiles in Petra's bedroom, and Petra will hollow out a room next to our kill box to function as our new armory. And unfortunately, we're not done with fighting mechanoids, as some more mechanoids have just dropped in on top of us. 
Unfortunately, however, two of the mechanoids have trapped themselves in Petra's future bedroom, and so we can quickly deal with the two outside mechanoids before moving in to deal with the other ones. And then Tyson can spend the rest of his evening shredding mechanoids down for steel. And in the evening, we can see that Johns has completed the research project for Starflight Basics. The only thing this gives us for now is the ability to construct ship structural beams. However, this research project unlocks all of the other spaceship research projects. And so, in continuation of our quest to build a spaceship, we will now be researching the Johnson Tanaka Drive, which allows us to construct a ship engine. The next morning, Shepard finishes laying down tiles and furniture in Petra's bedroom, and Tyson finishes making some advanced components at the fabrication bench. And Tyson can use these advanced components, as well as some plasteel, to get to work on his next project, a bionic leg. However, he will not make very much progress on his bionic leg, as for the third day in a row, we are being attacked by mechanoids from above. I position everyone in the kill box, and they quickly manage to take down both of the lancers that dropped in. There is also a pikeman that has dropped into John's bedroom, however it is also quickly dealt with. After the fight, we receive a psychic soothe for all females, and we can also see that Shepard has taken a charged lance shot to the leg, and so Petra can give him some medical attention. There is also an exotic goods trade ship passing by, however we don't have any money and they don't want to buy our core sets, and so we will not be able to do any trading with them. And in the evening, Shepard's gunshot injury gets an infection, and so Petra will have to give him more medical attention. And then in the morning, McTodd finishes a piece of art to go in Petra's bedroom. And thanks to her high mood, McTodd receives a go frenzy, which will make her go 40% faster for the next 8 days. In the evening, Tyson finishes working on his bionic leg, and when Shepard is done recovering from his gunshot injury, he is going to be doing a bit of surgery. Mick Todd is suffering from a stab scar on her right leg, as well as a missing toe on her right foot. Both of these injuries slightly slow her down, so if we were to replace her right leg with a bionic one, we could significantly increase her movement speed. Mick Todd will get into bed, and Shepard will grab the Glitter World medicine for the highest chance of success. The procedure takes about an hour, and when it's finished, we can see that Shepard has successfully completed his first surgery. We can also see that in place of McTodd's previous leg injuries, she now has a bionic leg. And when she is fully recovered from her anesthetic, it should improve her moving speed by about 12%. We can also see that Shepard has developed an immunity to the infection in his leg. The next day, we can also see that a snow hare has self-tamed, and so I think we will keep it around. We have enough food to feed it, and I think it would be cruel to slaughter it unnecessarily. And the following day, we are being gifted with 13 units of flake inside of a cargo pod. And we will not be using the flake, as it is rather addictive, however we will haul it inside, as we could sell it to the next trader that shows up. And the following evening, there is an exotic goods trader, so we can sell them the flake, and in exchange we can buy a small amount of gold. Tyson finds some steel underground, and then the next day there is another slave ship passing by. Unfortunately, we will not be doing any trading with the slave ship, as they don't want to buy very much of our stuff, and we still don't have very much money. In the evening, a chunk of a spaceship falls from the sky and lands to the north of our base, and in the morning, Johns finishes the research project for the Johnson Tanaka Drive, and our next research project will be Starship Reactors. Later in the day, Shepard will start working on a second deep drill so that we can drill for steel twice as fast, however his work will be interrupted by a manhunting pack of red foxes. We are not currently equipped to deal with such a large pack of foxes, and so McTodd will go close our doors and we will just wait them out inside our base. Shepard and Petra spend some time drilling steel together, and the following morning, we receive a Persona Core offer from the friendly tribes people. Persona Cores are very valuable and rare, and you need one to build a spaceship. However, before these people will tell us where a Persona Core is, we do need to get 40 goodwill with them, and we also need to have 1,500 silver to trade with them. 
so we will not be able to get a Persona Core now, however it is something that we will need to look into in the future. Later that day, Tyson will turn our kill box area into an enclosed room so it can stay warmer, and then we receive a cargo pods drop containing a large amount of bird skin. And throughout the day, using some steel and components, we will construct some transport pods on our pod launchers as well as some hydroponics basins. In the middle of the night, there are some travelers passing by who are quickly devoured by the manhunting foxes, and for some reason, this causes the mechanoid cluster on our map to wake up. And included in this mech cluster are two mech assemblers, one of which will summon pikemen, and the other one which will summon centipedes until we stop them. However, to get to the mechanoids, we will first have to take down the remaining foxes that stand in our way. The foxes are easily taken care of, however Tyson did receive a scratch, and so now it's time to go fight the mechanoids. And for this fight, Johns has equipped the EMP grenades from our armory because they can stun mechanoids. All six colonists go up to the top left corner of the map where they can hide behind a mountain and prepare to fight the mechanoids. However, on their way over there, Petra does end up getting shot in the leg by their turret. It takes a couple of hours, but by using the protection of her shield belt, McTodd is able to bait a scyther and a pikeman into following her to their deaths. While this is happening, the remaining mechanoids move out towards our base, which gives McTodd the freedom to destroy everything in the mechanoid cluster. Tai San then suffers a daze as some of the mechanoids are coming back to confront us. Luckily, they are easy to take out, though. And on our way home, Johns also goes into a daze, and we can see that the centipede from earlier has wandered into our kill box and is being taken out by our turrets. Injured people receive medical attention, and we are then being met with a medium level psychic drone for all females. The following morning, Shepard, McTodd, and Tyson prepare three transport pods to be launched. After loading the pods with a sufficient amount of food, and a brief flight, they arrive at the Sunblocker. The Sunblocker is being defended by a mechanoid cluster, however the cluster is far enough away from the Sunblocker that our three warriors can destroy it without it waking up. And now that the Sunblocker has been destroyed and sunlight has returned to the ice sheet, Shepard, McTodd, and Tyson will reform their caravan and make their way over to the nearby weather controller. And in the evening, we are being raided by mechanoids again. They are dropping right into our base, and only Lek, Petra, and Johns are here to defend it. And unfortunately for Petra, she is trapped outside and is shot down by the mechanoids before she can get into cover. Due to our limited combat power, a lot of this fight will be ducking in and out of the doorway, and while this fight is taking place, Shepard, McTodd, and Tyson arrive at the weather controller. And so now, we will have to balance between two fights at once. Shepard, McTodd, and Tyson take cover behind some rocks nearby the bandit camp. Meanwhile, Lack and John take down one of the mechanoids. Lack and John have to take their fight very slowly to avoid receiving any serious injuries. Shepard, McTodd, and Tyson are much more skilled fighters, so they manage to take down the pirates very efficiently. Our raiding party manages to scare away the pirates at the outpost, and so they can go in and destroy the weather controller now. And back at the base, Lek manages to take out the Scyther that's attacking us, and now she has to give medical attention to both Petra and Johns. Lek isn't a very good doctor, however she will have to be enough, because without medical care, Petra and Johns will die. And while Lek is being a doctor, Shepard, McTodd, and Tyson manage to destroy the weather controller. Lek finishes patching up everyone's injuries, however she will not be able to rest yet, as there is still a pikeman outside which is smashing up all of our stuff. Lek and the pikeman exchange shots until eventually Lek has taken the pikeman down, however she herself is not in great shape. 
Leck will do her best to patch up her own injuries, and then promptly will go on an insulting spree. We then receive a blight on all of our rice plants, and then we can also see at some point our snow hair was cut during the fight with the mechanoids and has just bled out. Later in that day, Leck ends her insulting spree and goes to bed, and we can also see that we are having power generation issues as it is no longer really windy from the rainy thunderstorm, and the pikemen earlier destroyed one of our wind turbines. And then in the evening, Shepard, McTodd, and Tyson make their way home from their adventure, and all of our characters are reunited. The next day, Shepard will reclaim some steel by replacing some of our old steel walls with stone, and he will then use those resources to build a new wind turbine. The next day, Shepard will build another wind turbine, and as he is taking apart the gloom lights from the mech cluster we fought earlier, another mech cluster is landing to the north. The mech cluster is currently dormant, however we should still deal with it as soon as possible. And so, two days later when Petra is fully healed, everyone will get ready to go fight some mechanoids. And before we begin our fight, we also receive a psychic soothe for all females. And before we start fighting the mech cluster, we also receive a quest to build a monument for the Empire, and we are being visited by a war merchant. Since we may be fighting the mechanoids for a while, I'll have Petra go talk to the war merchant before we begin our battle. And to the war merchants, Petra will sell some corsets and some old weapons for a total of $886. And now it's time to fight some mechanoids. The Scyther guarding the mech cluster is taken out very quickly, and then with some carefully thrown EMP grenades, the turrets are no problem. And after blowing up all of the turrets, everyone can work together to take down the smoke spewer. And while we were fighting the mechanoids, we also received a quest to have a toxic fallout for 9.1 days. And we will be accepting this quest, as the negative effects of a toxic fallout will not affect us too much on the ice sheet, and I think we might be able to get some good use out of the low shield pack that we get from this quest. So we accept the quest, we receive our reward, as well as the toxic fallout, and I will be giving the low shield pack to Shepard, as he is the most important person to keep safe in my opinion. Once Tyson is finished recovering from his injury, he will make button-down shirts for Petra and McTodd, as their shirts have become tattered. Shepard will then go outside and build another wind turbine, as we are still having power issues. And then since we have a day left to accept this monument construction quest, we will be accepting it for the goodwill, as we have the resources required to finish the monument. Shepard will put the monument marker down in our yard, and he will get to work on building the outer walls of the monument. However, we will have to be careful with how much time we spend per day on the monument, as we do not want Shepard to be getting sick from toxic buildup. We can also see that in the middle of the night, our husky has gotten sick from the flu, and so Shepard will give him medical attention after he finishes his breakfast. We will also be moving all of our batteries out of the hydroponics room and into our storage room, as I would like more room to expand our hydroponics in the future. And in the evening, after Shepard has finished up the walls to the monument, we are being visited by a shaman merchant. Petra goes outside to trade with them, however they do not have anything that I found to be worthwhile, and so she comes back inside empty-handed. In the morning, the shaman merchant is leaving, however they have also generously left us a gift of 29 gold. And right after they leave, we are being visited by a bulk goods trader from the Civil Outlander Union. These people will buy our insect meat, some cheap leathers, some old clothing, and some corsets. And then from the traders, we will purchase some boomalope meat and some chocolate. And after some consideration, I have decided that we will also be buying a cat. Cats are considered to be rather useless, as they will not do work around the colony like the husky will. However, they will frequently boost people's mood by nuzzling them, and because they consume rather small amounts of food, I think it might be worthwhile to keep a cat around for now. Shepard will start working on the stone tiled floor for our monument, however his work will be interrupted by a mechanoid cluster landing to the northwest of our base. And so we will be drafting up and preparing to face the mechanoids. And on our way over to the mechanoid cluster, there are also some more spaceship chunks landing nearby our base. I position everyone behind the mechanoid's defensive wall and prepare for a fight. Unfortunately, I forgot to take into account that the mechanoid turret could shoot around the corner at Petra, and Petra did end up losing one of her kidneys.
and aside from the minor setback at the start, the rest of the fight is pretty easily taken care of with the usage of EMP grenades and McTod's shield belt. And then everyone can work together to destroy the Climate Adjuster as well as the Mechanoid Assembler. Everyone heads home to get treated for their injuries, and when they do, there is a cold snap hitting the ice sheet, meaning it will be colder than usual for the next couple days. We are then visited by some royal tribute collectors, who we cannot afford to give anything to, and then we receive some cargo pods containing a small amount of muffalo wool. Later, Tyson will work on making a flak vest for Petra so she can be better protected. And then later in the day, Shepard finishes the research project for Starship Reactors. Our next research project will be Machine Persuasion, however I think this is a good place to leave things off for this episode. As always, I'd like to thank you all for making it to this point in the video. And if you enjoyed, I'd like to encourage you to leave a like, and if you'd like to see content similar to this, maybe even subscribe to my channel. With that being said, I will now be ending this video here. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.